evening and uh, thank you for participating uh, in this late evening for this uh, um, webinar. So as Mr. Agarwal introduced, uh, my name is Vijay Sundar and I'm a, a faculty member here with the uh, Indian School of Business. At ISB, we have uh, institutes and centers for research and it is so incidental that uh, the name of one of our institutes resembles uh, with a popular hospital, which is the Max Institute of Healthcare Management. So I work with uh, my colleagues here. Um, um, so some of them are here on the uh, webinar as well today, including Soumya Sheshidara, who is the Associate Director of Max Institute of Healthcare Management. So I would like to thank her and other colleagues here for uh, giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you. So if uh, we are all ready, we can get started. Is it okay, Soumya? Can we start? Absolutely, Professor. We can go ahead. Thank you. Great. Okay, so the topic uh, for which I'm going to talk for about 45 minutes from now is how uh, lean implementation can accelerate digital transformation of healthcare organizations. Um, personally, I have a great affinity towards this topic because the two keywords in the topic, one is lean implementation, the other digital transformation, both are close to my heart, uh, both on my teaching side, as well as on my research. So that way, today we will explore some of these topic integrations between these two topics, and how can we leverage lean implementation for the benefit of successful digital transformations in the healthcare. But before we get started on this topic, I would like to briefly talk about some facts, why all of this is required today? Why even this topic in this late evening today, why is it an important topic? So to answer those questions first, let us have a quick look at the healthcare as an industry today. Um, there are many challenges that the healthcare today is facing. Firstly, as you can see on the slide that is projected, a recent survey which is conducted by Optum Healthcare reveals that on an average, only 58% adults, um, they are not able to afford good healthcare. Uh, this is a global survey. So that means there is a problem of affordability with regard to healthcare. People are not able to buy healthcare. And let me put that in quotes, the word buy. Because we are talking in the business world where there is competition where we have a price attached to the service of health that we sell in the market. So, but if we see the urban rural divide and the many factors which keep the, the wealthy on the other side of the world makes only a 58% of the adults who cannot afford the healthcare. On the other side, there is another report by WHO and World Bank which states that more than 100 million households are forced into uh, abject poverty owing to the healthcare costs. So this is the other side of the coin that people who have afforded the healthcare today have resulted into some level of poverty. That shows that healthcare is quite an expensive uh, thing in the market today. This is not something new because we all are aware that how uh, expensive the healthcare costs have increased over a period of time. Irrespective of how different we are in our healthcare systems across different countries, still this is a common problem which has been observed, whether we are in a developed economy or in an emerging economy. Secondly, there is a health infrastructure inadequacy. This was very prominent across the globe uh, during the time of the pandemic that we all have witnessed. But keeping the pandemic aside, even the numbers speak for themselves. There is a lack of health infrastructure, especially in the developing countries. And there are several reasons which contribute to this. The aging population, there are lifestyle related diseases, issues with the government budgets, policies and investments. And the biggest problem which has ever been there was the urban rural divide. So most of our educated uh, clinicians, doctors, all of them uh, are on the other side, not on the rural side of the country. Especially in our country, in India, if we see 12.21 medical doctors per 10,000 uh, 10, population was the case in 1991. 
But if you compare that in 2020, the ratio is only 7.35. Now, this may be because of many reasons. This is a growing population could also be a reason contributing to this. But if we see these numbers are not really a promising number talking on the healthcare infrastructure perspective. So there is inadequacy and there is unavailability of uh, uh, the health infrastructure across the country, not only in India, but this is more or less common across the developing economies. So this is the second problem, which is prominent uh, that we are facing today, talking about the healthcare. Thirdly, let us talk on the other side. Let me not only talk that the rural population is not getting healthcare, but what about the urban population who are experiencing uh, healthcare from many of the hospitals? How are they feeling? Now, another challenge which becomes very important here is as human beings, we don't see different things that we experience in life very differently. We watch uh, movies on Netflix. We do banking using uh, net banking. So the same mindset as a beneficiary, I look at healthcare as well. So as, as a beneficiary, as a patient, I also expect the quality definition of healthcare to evolve over a time because the experience which I get from other uh, uh, service sectors which I'm experiencing in a day-to-day -day life have evolved over a period of time. And let me tell you that the digitalization has not penetrated healthcare to a great extent as compared to the other sectors, other service sectors that we are talking about. So wherever it is penetrated, the expectations from the beneficiaries have significantly increased. Today, patients don't expect just a, the quality care's definition is not just restricted only to a good prescription or an accurate prescription. It has gone beyond that. It has gone into a safe, transparent, timely, and integrated care, which is both efficient and effective. So the definition of quality and the expectations of beneficiary in healthcare have significantly improved over the time. And the inherent characteristics of any service sector uh, are there for healthcare as well. And this is both a challenge as well as an opportunity, which talks about the intangible, the heterogeneous, and the perishable experience, which is instantaneously, which the patients get whenever the service is provided, would also add to the complexity of what patients expect from the quality of healthcare. Now, the definition of quality has evolved. So the expectations are very high from beneficiaries. On the other side, there is inadequacy and unavailability of healthcare infrastructure. And whatever is available is of course expensive. That is the state in which the healthcare is currently. Now with this background, we need to talk about what can be done in order to overcome these issues. Now there is no one right solution to overcome this. If there were to be a solution, people would have already overcome these critical issues. But one such solution, which potentially has uh, 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 some level of capability to overcome these issues is the digital disruption. Now, digital disruption is a very tangible opportunity in front of healthcare. As we all have heard from many people, and we have been reading in many magazines, stories, in newspapers, and over the, uh, over the mouth, the word digital has become very popular buzzword today. And healthcare is not an exception to that. As you can see on the screen today, the unicorns, the, the startups which have been increased with regard to the healthcare sector, offering many of these digital services are making a lot of profits. That means there is a market for itself which is growing significantly uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, as you can see on the screen, the applications of digital disruption or digital transformation, which has potentially taken a big shape as a giant is what I tried to show on the slide here. On one side, we have telemedicine, which offers the patient doctor communications, the monitoring and e-prescriptions. On the other side, we have big data analytics, which helps in scheduling preventive human errors uh, in, uh, in fact, predicting the patient's inflow to the hospitals to plan the admission rate. We have wearable IoT devices, sensors, which help both in risk assessment and also in remote patient monitoring 
for the health condition prediction as well. It is so interesting to observe that today we live in the world where the pain that the patient could experience could be significantly reduced by techniques using virtual reality. And there are other techniques using artificial intelligence to improve the research, both on clinical and non-clinical side of healthcare, on pathology, on drug and vaccine research, and so on. Voice recognition, Alexa is just one example, which also helps in making the life easier uh, uh, from, from overall digital transformation, either by reducing the waiting times or even the medication alerts. Now, all of this have already taken a big shape today. So there is a tangible opportunity in the form of digital disruption, which we as healthcare administrators and healthcare practitioners have to leverage that towards solving the bigger problems that I spoke right in the beginning. Now, we need not solve them at a macroeconomic level. If not, at least at a microeconomic level, that means at our own healthcare organizations level, at our own hospitals level, if we can leverage many of these, we can start seeing a lot of economic impact that can be developed by solving the three key issues that I mentioned. Now, this economics can be very well translated using both the cost reduction, which is the bottom line benefit of the healthcare firms, and also in increasing the revenues, hitting the top line benefit of the healthcare organizations. And this is very prominent both in clinical and non clinical processes. Now, there are arguments which were made in the past that technology implementation in non clinical processes, there are opportunities. Uh, in clinical processes, the opportunity is less, but that is a myth. We have several examples starting from robotic surgeries to what not today, where clinical processes have been completely explored by the digital language or the digital transformation uh, and the emerging technologies. So the grid that you see here actually translates all these technologies into some kind of economic benefit to the healthcare organizations, which gets translated in either top line or the bottom line. Now, this is a great story, and I haven't spoken anything new to you so far, which is, which is there in all the, all the uh, things that we look around in the world today. There are problems in healthcare. There is digital, which is trying to solve these problems. But there are some bitter facts around this fancy movie that I was trying to show you on the digital disruption. The bitter facts are actually uh, uh, painful when we talk about digital transformation in healthcare. And let me show you some of those facts. And that is why I feel digital transformation is not just an art or a science to implement, but it is a combination of both. Because whenever we talk about digital transformation, there is only curiosity that comes first. But if this curiosity is not translated into a scientific method for deployment, it can become a disaster. And here are some of the bitter facts which I wanted to show you. 70% of digital transformations today actually do not reap the full harvest. And let me tell you, the investment which goes into digital transformation is actually a heavy investment. Now imagine if 70% of that uh, uh, which has been invested does not give you a full harvest, does not sound like a good strategy, at least to whatever we are trying to solve and whatever we are trying to improve that we discussed, is it really meeting is a big question to think about. Secondly, 67% of digital technology spent today is wasted, not only in 2018, of course, in 2018, the number was big, so I chose to pick that year, but even otherwise, even in 2021, most of our healthcare investment on digital technology space have not been completely leveraged to give us returns on investment. And a survey conducted by Deloitte says that Healthcare executives report only 35% of them with a high satisfaction on digital deployments. That means, are people really enjoying the experience of going digital is a big question to ponder. Now, on one side, digital, of course, is a tangible opportunity in front of us to leverage for the micro and macroeconomics and also to overcome the, uh, the problems that as a sector we are facing. But on the other side, digital deployments will not be successful and the investments will go for a toss if digital deployments are not 
looked or implemented in a very systematic manner. And here is the evidence which I wanted to show you. And that is why it becomes very important for us to learn how to really go on for a digital deployment journey. It is not the curiosity which could drive that alone, but there is some level of systematic deployment and some management education which will lead us to success so that we don't get into this slide where we become part of the 70% or 67% or 35%. And that is why digital deployment or digital transformation today has become an important core agenda for the management education. Now, there are many ways to overcome this problem. But today, in the interest of this topic, I want to talk what are the key reasons that we are undergoing this problem and how can we overcome this problem using operational excellence methods. Now, if we see some of the key reasons why all of that is happening, the 70% of digital deployments failing and only 35% of people who engage in the deployment have been satisfied, why all of this is happening, these are the key reasons. Firstly, we have started looking at health systems in a very easy way today, because we are looking at legacy systems which are helping us on a day-to-day -day consultations, on a day-to-day -day prescriptions, on any emergency procedures. Now, what needs to be understood is there is a big system behind all of this which interconnects all these pieces in the healthcare context. And let us admit that health systems are complex by nature. Inherently, health systems are complex. And adding to that, the digitalization effort is also complex. The decisions which go into what to digitalize, how to digitalize, whether we should create our own digitalization roadmap or will some third party help us do that, these are some complex decisions to ponder. Adding to the complexity is digitization become a fashion today. Now, there are many organizations which I have personally seen, not only in healthcare, but even in other sectors where the motivation to go digital is only because of competitors are going digital. Just because the other organizations we find are going digital, if that is the key motivation for a healthcare organization to embark their digital journey, let me admit it is not a very good way to succeed. The motivation and curiosity can be derived because the market is going in the direction, but just because somebody went digital, we going digital in a blind fashion will put us only into a blind loop. There is beyond a, a curiosity which needs to be translated into an implementation. Then comes the lack of digital technology strategy. Last year, we had an opportunity at Max Institute of Healthcare Management to do some research to check what is the state of healthcare digital technology penetration in our Indian small and medium-sized hospitals. And we, what we found was only 2% of the sample that we have seen have a digital technology strategy before embarking a digital journey. That means today, most of the hospitals in our country, I'm talking about small and medium-sized hospitals, jump on to do digital without strategizing the direction or a roadmap in front of them, what they really want to achieve out of a digital journey. We miss the big picture. We start digitizing in bits and pockets. That is the bigger systems thinking, which also uh, uh, currently lacking in the system, which makes most of our digital journeys uh, into a big failure. Now, there are other things also that you can see on the slide. And the most important thing which I would like to highlight is automating waste. And today, most of our healthcare administrators feel that digitization means I can pick up a process as a use case and go ahead and look for digitizing it. But if you take a step back, the important question to ponder is, am I digitizing a right process? Am I digitizing a right system? Is the system really clean enough? And is it a good candidate to go for a digitalization journey? These questions become important. Otherwise, just by automating a process, it doesn't become a good process. A bad process would remain as a bad process, even if it is digitized. So automating waste, will only create an automated waste. It doesn't solve the problem of the purpose why we are trying to digitize or automate something, right? And uh, 
the other other key reasons which are self explanatory on the slide also add to uh, the reasons why uh, the digital efforts today are failing in the healthcare sector now we, we we spoke about the bigger problems we spoke about the solution we spoke about why the solution is failing and these are the key reasons now we need to talk about how to overcome these problems so that our digital transformation efforts and investments don't go for a toss that's an important question to ponder and that is where this topic of lean thinking becomes a very powerful strategic weapon it is lean thinking that will create a healthcare firm readiness to go for digital transformation so unless you are a lean health organization my argument would be you jumping on for a digital journey you are only doing it by chance there is a big opportunity for failure and the failure could be more expensive than the investments that you are making for digitalization so to overcome these problems lean thinking becomes an important agenda now in interest of this session of course i'm going to talk about lean thinking only at this 150 mg uh, of magnitude so that i can tease you with more content when we meet again for the program that we are planning to launch so lean thinking let us first understand what lean thinking is and then i will talk about how can we use lean or lean implementation in order to enhance accelerate and successfully drive a digital transformation journey in a healthcare firm so to start with let me define lean to uh, the audience because all of you may not be aware of this concept probably some of you could be so lean drives on some principles so it is a way of thinking it is a way of living and it's a way of being in organizations so there are some lean principles which drive uh, what i call as lean implementation now in healthcare organizations when we talk about continuous improvement it is a way of culture building where the emphasis lies on reducing waste and variation in the activities and thereby we try to create more value for the patients and other beneficiaries of the healthcare sector and doing this is what simply called as lean now there is no rocket science in lean it is a systematic way of triggering this framework which will help us in three things reducing waste reducing variation and thereby improving value and creating a culture of continuous improvement now let me quickly explain this with a simple example so that we all can understand if there is some technicalities behind it now we all know that clinical standards are very clear because they are decided by the accrediting bodies or experts but business processes in healthcare are not like that today in most of the healthcare firms there are the business processes both clinical and non clinical are driven by the experience of the people now in one department in one person who is handling it in one hospital level at all these level at individual level at a department level and also at a hospital level the methods which are applied on business processes are purely dependent on what clinical training that has been uh, underwent by those individuals or the communities of people so this leads to what is called as some level of variation in our service that we provide to the beneficiaries now one way to look at it is applying lean principles on the processes where we experience variation in our service levels variation in our service offerings variation in the way the offerings are actually implemented in order to streamline the processes so that the process can be consistent irrespective of uh, uh, who does that which department does that or which hospital does that, uh towards creating the speed and the momentum by increasing the overall efficiency as an output of this overall activity now this is one way of looking at what lean can do as a benefit to our hospital first let me talk more about this part and then i will connect back how this can really accelerate our uh, transformation using the digital technologies now in order to understand this i want to talk about some fundamental things that we all experience so that i can make lean easier for all of us to understand now we all know that when somebody walks into a hospital we generally 
explain the phenomena of people people's experience in hospitals this way right so i walk into a hospital i meet with the doctors and if i feel comfortable with the doctors if doctor give me a good prescription if doctor talks to me uh, with empathetically if i am able to build trust with the doctor and generally we feel that i am a happy patient walking out of the hospital this is a myth this is a myth because this is not how patients experience what happens in a hospital of course doctors play a core and a prominent role and without doctors a hospital may not be a hospital at all i do agree with that argument but when we talk about patient satisfaction it is not only dependent on one entity in the hospital what patients experience could be very different from what we see here on this figure for that let me show you another figure this is what patients experience because hospital is a system and there are multiple entities which patient interacts over the time which is spent in the hospital now if we want to think about digitalization looking this entire system becomes the primary criteria and that is what lean actually triggers in all our minds that when we look at this entire spectrum even though the doctors do a great job in their clinical procedures or processes or diagnosis or prescriptions to the patients patients may also get dissatisfied if the experience with any other entities that you see here on the screen are not very healthier and that is where these metrics of cost time and efficiency safety quality and flexibility and the overall brand image or reputation and the revenues and market share of a hospital are dependent on whether we translate this one experience of a patient into a dissatisfaction side or an a satisfaction side because at the end of the day it is only these infinite simul experiences that patients get translate into this matrix that we measure both operational and at an enterprise level so this is one area the way if i have to explain hey what lean is about lean is about this lean is about this thinking which we have to promote before we have to go digital without this thinking any of our digital initiatives can only become pockets of excellence and pockets of excellence are more expensive because the integration between the pockets if not done correctly can lead into a big disaster which is worst than a non digital experience that we get in a hospital so the first component if i have to explain what lean is about i would say it is about systems thinking which integrates the big systems view of the experience that the patient gets in a hospital i gave an example of a hospital here and that is why i used the term patient if i have to generalize this discussion i would say whether you are part of a pharmacy whether you are part of a medical device manufacturing company whether you are part of a insurance a health insurance organization doesn't matter this logic still holds good for you and systems thinking still becomes an essential component because there the beneficiary may not be the patient directly the beneficiaries could be the interim customers it could be the hospital itself or it could be any of the other entities that you can see on the screen but nevertheless healthcare hospitals are uh, example is what i have shown but this is applicable to other healthcare entities as well the second important aspect that we can also take away from this example is about design thinking now design thinking is another important area where we experience what a patient experiences in the hospital and unless we empathize that and put ourselves in the shoes of the patient or the beneficiary we will not be able to be in a good position to digitize this entire value chain of entities because we don't know what is the experience which is determined by the patient journey in a hospital now again linking back to what does it mean to be lean these are the two things that i would highlight through this simple example so lean means triggering systems thinking lean means enabling design thinking before even we go for digital now this is one way of looking at lean let me give you another way of looking at lean as well now let us see this figure now this figure has three components to it 
Now let us see the first bar that you see on the top. It is, it is having different colors of small boxes, which represent some level of value adding activities and non-value adding activities in our processes. Now this could be a clinical process, non-clinical process, pharmacy process, uh, a doctor related process, or is it related to a pathology lab, doesn't matter. All the processes can be mapped or discriminated into two types of activities. One is the value added activities, which does not have any waste. And waste means anything which our beneficiaries does not perceive to be valuable is definitely a waste in the process. Now, if we discriminate it this way, all our processes in our healthcare systems as VAs and NVAs, and NVA is nothing but a non-value added activity or a waste existing in the process. And if we start mapping all our processes in our healthcare systems, we will find how much amount of waste that we are investing our time on a day-to-day -day basis in our healthcare systems. And let me tell you something from research. Research shows that across services sector, 70% of the activities which are done in our day-to-day -day basis actually are non-value added activities. We should try this activity in some of our organizations and experience ourselves what I'm saying would be a reality. And by applying the lean lens on the first bar that you see, just by discriminating and mapping the activities as value added and non-value added activities, we will be in a great position to use our common sense and remove the non-value added activities. Now there is no rocket science here. It is only a systematic way of identifying what is value added for my beneficiary and what is not value added for my beneficiary. And if we can crack that problem or that classification, then the rest becomes easier. We know that non-value adds have to be eliminated from the process and all our efforts would route towards that direction. And this is another way of looking at lean because lean triggers this mechanism in our healthcare systems. Imagine if every process that we do is mapped this way and we start eliminating the NBA slowly, which would result in the third figure that you see here, that becomes a lean hospital ultimately. And that is when you are ready as a hospital to go for a digital transformation journey. As I told you even before, if you have a process which is like the bar which you see on the top, the first one, then if you go and digitize that, you will end up digitizing the non-value adding activities as well. It may give you short-term efficiency gains. It may speed up your process to some extent because now it is done by a machine and not by a human being. But you will not gain a full harvest of your digital investments because still waste exists. Not done by humans, but done by a machine still. It consumes organizational resources. It consumes time. It consumes your capabilities. So this is another way to understand lean is to eliminate the non-value added activities. First identify and then eliminate. And that is when, when you become the, the uh, uh, lean healthcare system, that is when you become ready for a technology deployment or a digital transformation. Now, this is the second way I would project lean. The first way, as I discussed earlier, is about the systems thinking and design thinking. But in this way, we are trying to promote lean or define lean through the continuous improvement angle. Now, this is the second angle that I wanted to bring about lean. Now, this angle leaves us with two important aspects. One is eliminating your waste and improving the flow in the processes, both of which will increase the speed of our delivery and the quality of our delivery in our outcomes. And that is why continuous improvement is the core of any service and healthcare becomes more important because the risk of not delivering a quality outcome is nothing but the lives of the patients, right? And this is the second way I would like to position what lean is and why is it important for a digital transformation. Now, moving ahead, let me give you a third version of understanding lean. Let us take another simple example that we all come across in our day-to-day -day lives. This is about waiting in front of OPDs. This has been a perennial problem with many hospitals. Waiting in front of OPDs, no patients like it. Now, let us take a simple example to illustrate how can lean help us in order to solve such problems. Now, let us consider that we have three OPDs with us 
And all those three OPDs have made a promise to the patients that on an average, we'll try to uh, give you uh, 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 a less wait time. And how less is less is 20 minutes. So we say that every time when you come to the hospital, you need to wait roughly 20 minutes and then you will get a chance to go and meet the doctor. Now, let us assume that this is the promise that three hospitals are making. Now, all the three hospitals, we are talking about OPDs. The context is same. The problem is also similar. And the metric that we are measuring is simply the wait time. Everything remaining similar. Let us see how this appears in these three hospitals. This is how it looks like. Now, OPD 1, if you have a quick look at the hospital, what does this curve mean? is that on an average, that hospital is able to uh, accommodate a wait time of 20 minutes. That's what the OPD1, the orange line here means, the average performance. On an average, the wait time is 20 minutes in OPD1, but there are times where patients experienced 10 minutes wait time also, which is perhaps a favorable outcome, but there are times where patients experienced even a wait time of 30 minutes as well in OPD1. But if you see the average, it appears as though they are meeting the promise, isn't it? Now let us look at OPD2. On an average OPD2, the wait time of patients outside is 40 minutes and they have a variation. That means there are some patients who experience even 35 minutes wait time and some patients as late as 45 minutes wait time as well. Now, is the problem in OPD1 and OPD2 same? Can we use the same digital approach for OPD1 as well as for OPD2? The answer is no. Both of them, we are talking about waiting time problem. Both are OPDs. But the nature of the problem is very different in OPD1 to OPD2. And how did we recognize it? This is what I call as lean thinking. Because neither OPD1 nor OPD2, nor OPD3 is actually a 100% good process and all of them have an opportunity to improve. But the approach which we take to improve it is very different because the nature of the problem in OPD1 is the problem with the variation. On an average, they are able to meet the promise, but they are not consistently meeting it. On the second case, if you see OPD2, on an average also, they are not able to meet the promise which they are making because the least one, the least value which we observe in this graph is 35 minutes, which is much higher than my promise which is made. So this OPD is the worst, which requires immediate attention. And the approach which we take to improve this particular process in this OPD could be very different than the OPD one. Now, what I want to highlight here is I'm not saying how to solve this problem. How to solve this problem is a different question to answer. The problem here is to recognize that we're talking about different types of problems, which requires different types of approaches for digitalization. And how did we recognize that? That is called lean thinking. So this way of looking at lean helps us to recognize where will which technology help me to solve which type of a problem. Now, without this knowledge, if you jump on to go for digital, are we not making a curious mew to make a mistake? So this way of looking at lean, I would define it into recognizing the problems of unevenness in our performance. And number two is to sensing the right opportunities which deserve digital treatment for improvement in our healthcare systems. So this is the third way we should understand lean. Now, I try to explain lean in a very simple language in three different uh, perspectives. And if I have to sum all of that, which we spoke, what is lean? I would put it into this simple figure. And pardon me, Kuda, Mura, and Muri are not really bad words. These are the words which in Japanese means Muda as waste, Mura is unevenness in the operation and Muri is overburdening. Now, this is what we saw the three perspectives of lean. How can it help us overcome these problems? Firstly, we spoke about waste where streamlining flow 
and elimination of non value added activities is what we called as lean second we spoke about unevenness in the operation where we had opportunities to identify opportunities which deserve digital uh, uh, digital way of improvement and not all problems requires a digital way of improvement but how do i discriminate that lean helps us to that. number 2 when the nature of the problem is different or the approaches which needs to be taken are different how do we recognize that lean helps us doing that thirdly we spoke about the pockets of excellence problem and the missing systems thinking or the customer journeys which we don't see when we look at improving the processes that is where systems thinking and design thinking also qualifies to be part of the bigger lean implementation now this is how lean will accelerate the digital transformation in healthcare because it sets the background for a successful digital journey in other words it create readiness in your healthcare organizations before you jump on to it now isn't it a good way and a non risky way or practically speaking a less risky way to burn our fingers our investments our efforts by putting money into digital by not making all this that you see on the screen perhaps this could be the reason why those 70% of digital investments digital interventions which i showed you earlier would have failed if they would have done some way of lean implementation to promote these three aspects of how we looked at lean before digitizing the processes probably they would have succeeded in their digital transformation journeys now in summary if i have to answer this question which is the topic for this webinar how can lean accelerate digital and let me revert this to enhance this particular question saying how can lean enable accelerate and successfully drive a digital transformation this is the answer firstly lean helps us to answer these two important questions what does value mean to my patients value what i mean as a service provider could be very different from what my beneficiaries mean what value is and value has many definitions based on who is experiencing it for some value could be speed for others value could be a economical or cheap way of getting a service for somebody else value could be quality or accuracy or something else so identifying what value means to my different set of beneficiaries and how to strategize my organizational efforts in order to prioritize what actions needs to be taken in order to enhance the value that i give to my patients that is what lean actually does at a strategic level it helps in value discovery it helps us set the strategic direction and these are the two elements which are prerequisites for a digital transformation secondly to answer this question lean helps us to discriminate what actions today what processes today what activities today we are doing in our healthcare firms really add value and which does not add value so it is discriminating and categorizing value added and non value added activities for us which promotes patient centricity which also helps us to improve the flow of our entire processes on information material even the problems like the privacy the transparency all of this are aligned towards what i call as patient centricity and agility in order to translate our patient journeys and their perceptions into opportunities for digital transformation and lastly all of this cannot happen overnight and if it happens overnight then you are a risk higher risk of failure and that is why i call this as a continuous improvement journey now lean enables small improvements which creates a culture across your healthcare organization slowly which develops as the dna of your hospital and other healthcare firms in order to prepare yourself to answering many important questions like when i go digital is the new digitization which i am going to embark will it be integrated with my current systems or not do i need to customize my digital uh, apparatus or do i need to standardize it across the organization 
do i need to make technology or can i go buy technology from a service provider do this process and opportunity in front of me really deserve a digital way to solve it or is there a cheaper economical easier non digital way through which i can solve this problem all these questions lean helps us to answer and that is where it slowly creates organizational dna which will prepare you towards a successful digital transformation journey and this is how lean accelerates digital journeys to right now there are many successful stories where healthcare organizations have embarked on digital journeys and they have been successful but if you look at those stories in conscious way or unconscious way there is a great element of lean thinking and lean implementation which those hospitals and other healthcare firms have really deployed i can give you several examples what you see on the screen is only a sample sample healthcare firms these examples come from india as well as from the us and other side of the world from uk as well where there are firms which have embarked their lean journeys and then moved from lean maturity to embark on their digital journeys and today these are the names of many successful hospitals that we are talking about so i i hope in this 40 minutes of what i spoke to you i try to answer the question of how can we enhance accelerate and drive digital transformation journeys especially in our healthcare organizations using lean implementation so with this i will start the presentation and i will open the house if you have any questions to answer i would recommend uh, you can type the questions in the chat box uh, uh, the q and a window and uh, i can request vandana to read out the question and route it to me if there is an answer that i can give you so thank you very much for the patient listening now we'll hand over to vandana to facilitate the q and a thank you professor i see two questions in the q and a box so one is about uh, the ayushman bharat digital mission dr saurav is asking how to titrate our capacity against the current digitalization need with relation to the apdm okay thank you very much uh, dr saurav mighty for this question i mean from from your question there is an interesting point that i can highlight again relating to my presentation ayushman bharat digital mission or national digital health mission that we are talking about in the country is again a systems thinking concept here the beneficiaries of course could be the end beneficiaries could be the patients uh, who actually wants to have an insurance which will support them in their healthcare costs but if we have to implement this as a system of course the systems thinking had played a bigger role there are many players to make a national digital health mission successful there are hospitals there are private parties there are government policy level implications there are parties in insurance companies all of which come together in order to create a digital identity for the healthcare so to answer your question on capacity against the current digitalization need i would say again the systems thinking is the right approach to go for this thank you professor uh i see another comment by sheik who says that a lot of healthcare institutions especially the private hospitals they are less patient centric and more focused on the financial uh, aspect of the healthcare business so he just seeks your comment on sorry this. can you repeat the question vandana so sheik is saying that a lot of private healthcare institutions are more focused on business and not patient centricity so what is your comment on this okay i mean uh, sheik let me put it this way patient centricity the is very much related to the financial or economic benefit that any enterprise would uh, experience it is through the patients the patients are the one who actually bring in money Uh, um to any uh, healthcare entity isn't it so if if you feel that there is less important on patient centricity and there is only important on financial centricity that means we are talking about an effect and not the cause leading to the effect and over a period of time this financial centricity will fade away automatically 
because if patients are not really happy about the experience that they get in a healthcare organization they are not they are losing those patients the healthcare organization is losing those patients so this may result this thinking of what you mentioned as less patient centricity and more financial centricity may give only immediate quick fadey uh, uh, results which is just an illusion over a long term this may not be a successful model because ultimately it is those who are happy patients who prefer to come back to the same uh, uh, service provider again and again whenever there is a need so we cannot afford to lose uh, uh, an important customer and at the end of the day whether we call it a patient whether we call it a customer or whether we call it by any other term they are the one who contribute to this particular revenue generation to the hospital right so i would say it would fail in the long term if we promote this thinking very well put prof sir thank you uh, so, uh, people also want to know if there are any books or resources that you would recommend for for the reading oh definitely uh, there are several resources uh, and uh, we can definitely interact and you can always write to me uh, specifically and what uh, uh, resources you are looking for because uh whatever i spoke today is actually an ocean uh, it is about digitization is an ocean both lean is an ocean or continuous improvement is an ocean i only tried to speak a small drop of that ocean today as part of this presentation so if you if you want to have any resources that you like to uh, look at i'll be very happy to share whatever i have with you if you can write to me separately uh, on specifically what so you want i will try to share it with you and let me also take this opportunity to answer this question Uh, that uh, the biggest resource that we can offer uh, right away is what Soumya will speak in some time about the upcoming program on digital transformation that Max Institute of Healthcare Management is offering. That is one resource which is readily available irrespective of uh, what special specific question you are going to ask resources about. It covers a gamut of spectrum of things, and Soumya will talk about that in uh, in a short while from now after we finish this Q. Right. so uh, one last question prof sir is the high cost of digitalization making healthcare organizations uh, refrain from becoming digital in the process wonderful question thank you very much uh, mr kumar sarai uh, firstly high cost of digitalization i would i would say let us call it the higher investment that go into digitalization that would be a better way of expressing it i understood the intent behind your question see digitalization appears to be expensive only from an investment perspective on a long term value it creates if you see the returns on investment that we reap on a long term basis actually digitalization is not expensive today research shows that there is an estimate that the 200 billion cost that is experienced in the us healthcare market has a potential to be reduced to 165 billion just because of digitalization so digitalization can actually reduce the overall healthcare costs at a long term that's what i said it cannot happen overnight but digitalization has a long term value which needs to be realized so if i have to answer your question is the high cost of digitalization making healthcare organization to refrain the investments are actually high i do i do agree with you but the returns on investment if we have to see in a long term basis really more attractive so if you see only one side of the uh, coin on uh, investments alone it may not be a good proposition to make a decision but yes to answer your question very straight the investment could be as as high as how you how much you want to grow in the digital maturity but i i hope the the topic of lean which i spoke about could save the, those uh, higher investments which go into digitalization to a great extent